Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome on back to the Hardcore World for episode number four, where we are still alive. We've got some shiny gold armor on us. I got something very important to start today's episode off with here. I need your help. Things might look a little different here. Because, my friends, I have changed my Minecraft skin. I went with the skinnier arms with the Alex model, and I kind of really like it, but I want to hear your feedback. So here's the new skin, and here is the old skin. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Hashtag new skin or hashtag old skin. I'm kind of loving the new one right now since it's just new and shiny and different. But we have got some more important things to do today like our Minecraft chores of you all clicking the like button down below. I've got to harvest up some wheat here, some carrots, some potatoes, and some log chopping I'm thinking. We just got to get the grind rocking. You guys, my friends, the plan for today is we are going to be working on some animal farms as well as expanding our farming setup here. It's these little fields we got around here. They're giving us a decent amount of stuff, but I would love to be able to get a lot more wheat production rocking because we're going to start breeding some cows and getting some serious food up here. So we're not just eating steak anymore. As well as I would love to get some... Oh, I don't have my hope. As well as I would love to get some sheep, some cows, some chickens, and the works around this entire area because we need a lot of animals because I want to start just making this area feel like a luscious farm land. And right now, it feels like a little compound. I do love it. I absolutely love it. Last episode, we got the storage room rocking up there as well as building up our first custom tree of the world. And it is all looking very, very cool. But there's so much more we can do out here. But as the start of all great Minecraft worlds, we have to chop many, many a large spruce tree. And gathering up a lot more sugar cane. I ended up doubling up the size of this one here and we're gonna be able to get so much stuff. Now, before we get to too much building over here, I think it's gonna be pretty important for ourselves to actually collect the animals so we can start breeding them as we're going so i think everything we need is carrots we need some wheat and we need some seeds because carrots will get ourselves the piggies this will get ourselves the sheep and the cows and then this over here will get us the chickens and i've got a few fences for ourselves and it's going to be nighttime so i'm gonna do a little sleeping action here this right here should do the trick now i just gotta find some animals and convince them to jump inside of these pits okay let's do it come on over here you want to go to a new forever home it's gonna be great there's gonna be so much slop everywhere and carrots all over the place all right, you two just follow me right up here. Yep. Oh, perfect. Okay, he has selected that hole for y'all. And there you go. Mega baby. Oh my gosh, look how cute it is. Okay, next up we got the sheep. Sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. Come on, buddy. No looking at the ocean today. We've got work to do. I'm seeing some cows across the river. We've got a chicken right over here. We need two chickens, though, and I think there's it. There's the second one. Oh, my gosh. I love the plains bombs. There's everything we need. All right, now for the very tough journey, crossing the river. You can do it. I believe in you. Just move on over here, guys. We're so close. You're doing it. You're doing a great job. Everything here is going way too easy today. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm scared for something to happen and now I'm cursing myself. Okay, let's get you in here, buddy with your friend with your friend Come on now with your friend. There you go. Woo. Yay. Perfect and make a baby and a baby We got one chicken in tow and there's a second one right over here The seabirds will be coming home with us. Come on in you can figure it out up on the block There you go and just join your friend in there. Yeah. Yeah, do it. Yes. Now you all live in here together now for the fun times is we have to figure out where we're putting these animal pens. I was originally thinking going around this area here, kind of attached to the barn. I don't want them to really be feeling like they're a part of this inside hamlet that we're creating. I wanted them to feel like they're on the outside, similar to how all of the fields that we're going to be having are on the outside here too. So I'm figuring the exit point that we have for the horses to get out of the stable. Maybe we do them over here, but I think we can take a little bit of time to gather up some dirt and flatten this area out a bit more. I'm starting to get so many ideas for terraforming around this area as I'm just slowly sloping it out and making it look a little bit better for ourselves. But I'm thinking what we can have is we have the pathway coming out right here, right? And then we can have it just jutting right back up on this way. We can do the chickens along the edge of the wall right in here because they're not going to need a huge pen. So I'm thinking that'll probably lead us to the pathway. I'll be going somewhere right throughout here. And then we can have a larger field right over here where we can have all of our sheepies. And then maybe right back in here, we can have an even larger one where we can have all of the cows living in their own paddock. And then over off onto this side, we're going to have the pigs. 
And what I was thinking on top of that is we have this natural little divot right here where the land is all really recessed and creating these little bit of like the V shapes pointing to where we are right now. Some sort of a spring of water, natural water coming out of this way. And we're going to create a little bit of a river that's going to send its way all the way down here. Now, those are pretty ambitious ideas to get done, especially when uh, we're still rocking on iron shovels that are basically depleted now at this point in time. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do. So it's time for me. Yep, there goes the iron shovel. Now, a really cool feature about chickens inside of Minecraft is that they cannot jump over a trap door if the trap door is facing this way. So if the chicken is on this side of the block, basically where it's not connected to it, they cannot jump over the trap door. But if they're on this side, they can. So we can actually utilize that a little bit here to make it a bit easier to create a small wall around our chicken pen. We've got a little bit of an entrance right in here for us. We'll get some torches thrown on the outside. We're going to have to come out here and make sure this whole area is safe to walk around in. But then we can start doing little things like this right in here. And that'll actually be a full wall for us. And then over in this point where things are a little bit taller, I'm thinking we can make me do something right over in here. And then using a few more of these trap doors for ourselves, we can finish off the wall right in there. So it's just got a lot of variety to it. A lot of stuff all over the place. Lastly, gonna strip all of these logs down so it blends in a little bit better with the surrounding area since we've been doing that everywhere else or just been using the plain oak logs. But now I need to actually go get some, no, I do have them on me, plain oak logs. But what we do need is to get a rail up in here so we can get a little entrance into a chicken coop. We can get rid of that guy so that it'll stay up there totally fine. And then we're gonna be needing a few of these spruce slabs going right across here. And I, from here, wanna get some oak trap doors. You guys, we can throw them all the way around here and we can create a little bit of a super simple looking chicken coop right like that and you know what now that i'm thinking about it i think i might move this trap door to be in right here and then we can move the rail over to the end i think that would look a little bit better and perfect i love that oh that's gonna be so cool now we just got to get some chickens in here and i don't think we want to put any sweet berries in something tells me the chickens are not going to be too intelligent when it comes to those everybody come on in all the way in there we go welcome in all right there you go you can breed up again another one there for us and we got two eggs so let's see if these things work and please Tell me you cannot jump over. I'm gonna hold some seeds over here and can you all get to me? Nope, cool, still works, great, fantastic. Oh, the baby chicken's in the chicken coop, look, oh my gosh, he's actually using it. Oh, we caught it on camera. Somebody used the chicken coop once in this point in time, the build was worth it. Next up, I'm thinking we tackle the cattle pen since it's gonna be a bit on the larger side. And for this one, I was thinking we can go with just using a stone wall stretching around this entire area, because I think that'll make a lot more sense. Bringing the wall out to here, then doing a harsh corner where we're actually gonna be having the entrance. And then I'm thinking we can start to curve this guy going around a little bit further. I wanna make sure the cows have a lot of space for themselves and we can breed up a absolutely massive amount eventually and it won't cause any lag because they're just stuck in the entity cramming living inside of the same block. We'll come back over and detail this section out a little later on, but for now, let's just make it so it's actually a wall that nobody can get inside of or out of. That would be very important. Now for the front of this one, I do want to copy a little bit about what we did on the front entrance into our village and make this just a tad bit smaller, I'm thinking, and more on the simple side. So we've just got two of them sticking up there and then we have some spruce slabs for ourselves, which we can do spruce slab if I I can land the placement and then bring in some trap doors straight across. We can just do that guy. And finally with another slab right up there. I think that'll be perfect for the entrance. It really shows us where it is without being too obstructive. Come on over to your brand new home. Woo, it's right up here. So much more spacious and even better than the chickens. I should probably put the ax away. No, no, don't pull out the sword flip. Don't pull out the sword. That is not what we want. Come on in everybody, come on in. Yep, there you go, the whole family's here. And now they're a family of four and I'm gonna sleep here with them. With our path being divided right down in this area and just kind of arching its way up here, I figured that meant that we kind of needed to include one of the animal pens right down at this point instead. So I'm thinking right here, we can actually throw our sheep. I don't know if I mentioned that or had them up here further, but we're gonna do this. Sometimes you just gotta go with the new plan. Now, this is not at all the most efficient way to build a sheep farm or anything like that, or even the best way to do it. Probably having a box would be a lot better but I like making him look super natural. We just have this small pen. I'm realistically not gonna have many sheep. And if I do have a lot of sheep, I should really be building some auto sheep farms for them. The reason being is I don't wanna be walking around and just seeing cobblestone walls everywhere. I want this to actually feel like we can see in and check on how the animals are doing. 
and more importantly, if there's any creepers on the other side without actually having to jump inside of the pen. So, you know, that's probably pretty important for us. These guys are ready to go. Time to grab the sheep, which I did come down here and breed up one more time. So we've got four of them. Ooh, four sheepies. Come on in, my children. Come on in. All the way inside, there you go. Now stay here forever. Now that we've got the sheep set up over here, however, I'm thinking we can just extend an area off of that and actually incorporate that into being the pig pet. And then extending it up a little bit further, I feel like it's gonna look like a bean in the end and it's okay. We're just gonna have a nice little bit of a bean shape for our pigs to live inside of. I just had a great idea of how we can make that area very, very quickly turned into, ooh, I meant to close that. Into the coarse dirt and podzel, which unfortunately means we gotta go take a few of our spruce saplings down, but we've got so many bones here, which means we've got so much bone meal. Any luck on the chickens today? No, no luck. But what we could do is bring in this guy right here and just bone meal him oh perfect i love that how much spread outside okay we're gonna have to replace that oh oh no <laughs> did not mean to do that and that my friends is why you double dirt there we go something more like this should be absolutely awesome feeling much more like a pigsty now incorporating a lot of just the regular dirt in here too since i feel like that hopefully won't be turning back into grass or if it does i don't think these guys can spread that far it should be okay now for the final migration of farm animals into their pen, we can move the pigs on over. Welcome home, my buddies. I added this barrel over here where I think I'm gonna keep a stack of seeds, a bunch of wheat, and some carrots in there. So any breeding that we need to do, we can just get it right from this point here. What I'm gonna do next though, is texturize all of these walls up where we have the cobblestone right now, and see if I can't mess around with detailing these sections out a little bit further. I made a small trip over to the jungle to get some cocoa beans for ourselves so we can start dyeing some of the sheep brown and get some more wool rocking so we'll be back for these guys here soon because i think our easiest way to hide torches is probably going to be underneath brown carpet for now as you can see i've got the wall texturized going all the way around this thing we're going to eventually come back in and add some sweet berries and stuff around them for now but uh, let's focus on the pathway itself back in here I also gathered up some jungle leaves and some vines and stuff because I needed to get a lot more mossy cobblestone, so I figured I'd do it all at once. But I was thinking we could bring these lower portions back over in here and then maybe do a little berry action right over on that guy and we could start bringing in some jungle leaves. I think this will make it completely mob safe back in these areas and I believe sweet berry bushes stop mob spawning. We'll have to figure that out as we go. But I also grabbed a few ferns accidentally while I was just going crazy, breaking the vines, breaking the leaves and all that stuff. And I thought just a corner red leg in there like that could be very, very cool. Next up, however, I figured we could run around and breed up all of the animals. The chickens have been going crazy back here. We've got a bunch of them. We actually have quite a few eggs now, which has already hatched one of them and uh, only one of them. Well, texturizing everything, the pigs did briefly escape. So I think I've already bred them. Them up yeah it looks like I have okay you guys just keep chilling hey cows how we doing boys what's going on how's it going in here let's get some cow breeding action on here yeah perfect there we go the herd size is growing I think they need a tree in there I think they need a tree that's such a big place to not have a tree so I think we're gonna build a tree in there and lastly but definitely not least hey sheepies what's going on back here how's it going boys there we go we've got six sheep now that's actually pretty good what I think we can do is maybe take two of them now that we have six and dye them brown. Reason being is whenever we breed the brown sheep together, we'll get more brown sheep, which would be awesome. How did you get out here? Let's jump this wall. See, look, they can come in this way. It's perfect. Now I went to go make some coarse dirt so we could start decorating this pathway out a little bit better here and found out that uh, we have no more gravel. All of the gravel that I had, I actually used to decorate the walls here with everything. We were running very low on resources. We got 56 torches on us. We got an almost dead iron shovel, but we can use our torches to help harvest up all of the gravel so we don't get any flint. And I'm thinking it's time to go down to the mines and do a little bit of strip mining, maybe find some more diamonds. Was that? No, that was andesite. I thought it was gravel. Last time we went a good distance of uh, that way, so let's turn right back around and head off here. Oh, and we are right into a cave. Ooh, I see some gold ore though. Anything else in here? We're at the very end of the cave, so that's good for our safety levels. And what are we gonna get all the way up here? We got some water, even better. Not seeing any mobs quite yet, but there is an abandoned mine shaft right over there, which is a wee bit scary, and a very large, massive cave above us. All right, I'm gonna block up this water, and then that's probably gonna unleash the hordes on us, right? Yeah, nothing right over here, just the mine shaft itself and any chests or any spider spawners. We have a shield, I am safe. There is some, ooh, there's a lot of good stuff in here. All the gravel we could ever need. 
<gasps> oh, we found some diamonds. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We don't have fortune three quite yet, but we can at least pick those up for now because our pickaxe is getting a little low. It's very worrisome that there's no mob spawning down here anywhere nearby us. So I'm kind of terrified of that. I'm just waiting to find a giant pocket of them everywhere here soon. Oh, now I'm hearing spiders. And we got a lava lake down here, which is guarding that end, so that's good. We got some redstone right over there. I think we are safe to grab these diamonds. Let's see, we've got one. We've got two, three. Hey, you know what? It was only a skeleton, so that's good. I didn't even hear his footsteps coming down this way. Normally you hear the little clanky clanky bits of a skelly. There we go, four more diamonds for ourselves. We've got some coal that I can gather up here super fast. I would love to be able to at least explore these ways just a bit further. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stuff. Follow me this way, Skelly. I don't wanna fight you and a spider. I think one of my favorite and least favorite parts of mining is that you never know what you're gonna get. You can walk around a corner and you can find a cave. You can expect to do some strip mining and find this crazy cave. You can find all the mobs you could ever need in the entire world. And it's just terrifying. No matter what you're doing in hardcore, it's just always scary. I feel like season one of hardcore, I was way more brave. This time around, I'm like, God, I have to stay alive, I have to stay alive. The reason I did come here, however, was to gather a bunch of gravel, so I should probably try and get this so we at least have some success in our mining mission. I do love the torch trick for getting rid of any falling object. It is so nice. Well, we're four diamonds richer. We've found some brown mushrooms for ourselves and we got a lot of coal out of that little cave system there. I'm thinking it's time to go back to doing the strip mining though, just for my own sanity levels. Let's just do this and see what we can find out here. I think for now, hey, look, some redstone. This might be a little bit just simpler. We are so close to level 30, and as soon as we have any sort of diamond armor, protection enchantments, all that type of stuff, it is gonna be so much easier to run around in these caves because we have room for error. Right now, we don't have the ability to risk too much because we can go down so, so easily. I'm not that great at combat in this game, so the minute I get stuck in with some skeletons or anything of, the so of that sort, I'm usually taking some amount of damage. Normally, I hate coming across gravel like this, and no, that's a ravine. Okay, maybe we're not gonna go up there. Yeah, that's a big old spooky ravine right there. Well, I'm almost out of torches. My diamond pickaxe is almost broken here and that ravine is looking very terrifying. I'm hearing lots of zombie sounds and things like that around us. So I don't know how much we're actually gonna be doing in here. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm ready for that one here today. Let's go hang out with our peaceful farm animals again. Until we get over to the Mushroom Island and start building over there and doing some underground work there, I think I'm mostly gonna be just living above ground. Above ground is very peaceful. I'm gonna plant all these mushrooms down here so they can start growing and spreading all over the place because we're gonna need those for potions of weakness later on. So that was actually an awesome find, but we got a good amount of stuff. We can make a whole stack of coarse dirt with that half stack of gravel that we got. And it is time to work on our pathways a little bit more. With the big time upgrade coming in here of the diamond shovel. Oh, feels good, feels good. A shiny diamond on a stick here. Moving on from the pathway, I went and gathered up a bunch of birch leaves as well as a little bit more granite over here. And I've been working on detailing out a few trees and well, building a few trees. And I got this first design over here that I kind of love. It's really unique. I love using the walls where we can inside of, in place of being a trunk for having some skinnier trees and stuff like that inside of our Minecraft world. And it's been really interesting trying to make something over here that I feel like I can actually increase the size on and it's okay, oh, goodbye leaf. And I'm not too worried about it feeling like it's just gonna be out of place or just off. Just gonna be doing the two for now cause I'm kinda down to just a stack of the leaves left. So we gotta be very careful on these, but I think in the end, like a third one right over here could be pretty cool as well. Okay, I lied, I definitely had enough to build the third one. Now I'm realizing this middle one over here is rather skinny at the top, but I love the two on the end. Oh, this is so good. What's not good is the amount of fall damage I've taken trying to get up and down these things. Pretty sure if I fall from this point, I might actually die. Let's just do something like that and then uh, that, sure. The animal pens took a lot longer to build up than I thought they would, but that's gonna be great for our economy moving forwards and actually being able to get the books for the bookshelves, which is gonna be huge. We can pretty much do all of that. We only need two more levels and then we're at level 30. And then from there, we can start doing some really cool enchanting. And next up, well, we're kind of waiting for that stuff to go through. I just got to keep breeding up all of the cows and everything. So I figured a great way we could get some more wheat and everything like that is by planting in our first wheat field. Where did you come from? How did you get in here? What are you doing? You can live this time. Been saving up quite a few seeds for ourselves and we've got almost five stacks of them, which is gonna be super cool to have. And so I think we can use those and start planting out a big field. What I'm gonna do is we definitely need another bucket. I think the chickens are somehow able to push each other through the trap doors. I think I just saw one pop out over there and somehow we have another one on the inside 
And I don't know how they're getting out of this place, but there are chickens getting out. You can see one of the babies is in there. There's no way a baby could naturally spawn just in there. So uh, I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for that for now. How are you guys getting out of here? Uh, like that, that's exactly how they're getting out. Okay, I need to get another leaf right there. Hello chickens, come back inside the pen. Thank you very much. It must be something with having the leaf bushes in there next to these current existing ones that causes them to kind of be like, oh, we can actually jump over that block because right over here, they haven't even tried getting over. Like, look at this, I'll stay here. Nobody's making it through. But for some reason, that corner, they can do it. I don't know. Next up though, folks, I know I mentioned it previously is that I want to have some sort of a river running down throughout here. And I thought we could set that up first before we get the field rock. And this is going to be kind of a grindy one, but I think it's going to look really cool in the end. It's only going to be about two, three blocks wide, maybe, and mostly like the one to two block range. So it's going to be rather small, but thankfully we do have the diamond shovel now. So we can really use that to start cutting out a lot of this terrain. I smelted up a bunch of stone and cobblestone to be able to get this one in here and made some more mossy cobble. So I think we're just going to have it kind of poking its way out from inside of here or maybe something like up in this point. I really like the idea of it just being pretty on the basic side, mostly out of the stone that we have here and just a few little bits of the mossy cobble in all over the place. What might be best is if we actually just bring this area down a little bit. It doesn't have to have that extreme slope coming right outside of the pond. It's already going to have that one block drop when we just have it coming out of there. So that could be all good. And that should be good for the front starting point. It's going to come all the way down here. Where for now, let's create a little bit of an infinite water source. I want to make this look like it's flowing, but still more on the infinite side, just so it's not something that we have to worry about stopping or things like that. And we got it going right throughout here. We can skinny it up just a touch. I don't want this to be crazy big and obtrusive, just a little bit of like a streak of blue coming throughout this entire area. Very much following the natural curve that already exists in the Minecraft landscape around us, we're going to be able to create something very cool here. And I need to chop all of those fences down. Those will be useful to have for us later. Uh, but it gets us down to this flattened out point, which is going to be beautiful coming right throughout there. Then we have all of our farmland. And where do we go from here? Well, we have this weird little pit here in the center, which goes into all these big spooky caves, which I don't want to explore. But I think the natural cause is that it would go as quickly as it can towards the ocean. So maybe we have it somehow flowing out into this little bit of a marshy pond section. Which using a little bit of dirt to plot out the pathway for ourselves could be something more like this. Yeah, we get a nice little S curve coming down here. We'll fill in that pond there eventually in place of a field or something like that. But I think this could be a good start for a little custom river network we could have around the area. I'm digging this, folks. I'm digging it. It's looking really cool now. And I think it's about the time that we can bring all the water in and just see what it looks like as a starter test point. And there we go all the way down to the ocean. Now, it's not too big, as I mentioned. I want it to be rather small, but this is looking really really good now i'm just envisioning coarse dirt pod zones and path blocks going all the way along the edges of it and it's just going to be so so cool maybe a small bridge jumping across of it but now now my friends we've got to plan out where some pathways are going to be going and probably first eat some bread it is wheat field time so we've got to figure out where we're going to be putting our first one of these guys which i'm super excited for because this is always such a cool point to do i'm not going to border these fields at all i just want them to be giant fields that are kind of roaming all over the place big old patches of wheat that we're going to make it since we have so many walls and things around our village our animal pens and everything like that i think if we did walls around the fields too it'd be a bit too much so let's save some resources and just say forget it again using some dirt here as some rough ideas for where our pathways are going to be going i'm thinking we have these two stretching all the way down and meeting up somewhere here in this general point we can figure it out and fix it up as we go but what that means for us over here is one i need a hoe and two this entire segment from right down throughout here and i'm thinking a little bit down below this edge maybe to like i want to keep this one flat for now so we don't have to worry about anything walking over the top of it and i'm probably going to need a second hoe but this entire raised up platform i think could be really cool as a bit of a wheat field and we'll dip a little bit down here along the river's edge too first hoe just died on us here unfortunately and we are about halfway done tilling out the field and as you can tell it's gonna be a big one this here should about do it for the size of the field it's pretty big i don't think i have enough wheat seeds to fill this entire thing but we'll see how far we can get on it wasn't quite as big as I expected it to be. We actually have 50 wheat seeds left to go for ourselves. And I was thinking with this little bit of sugar cane I had on hand, we could bring that over here and start decorating the edge of the river just a touch and have this stuff start growing up. I'll come back in with some string and things eventually when we have a good amount of it. Right now, I just have 10, but we can stop these from growing too tall because sometimes I 
love to just have the sugar cane sitting at one tall or two tall instead of going all the way up to being the three tall. It can just look a little spammy at that point. Watching the wheat fields grow up is both one of the most boring things to do and also one of the coolest looking things inside of Minecraft. I wish there was a way to lock the stages in so you had some full grown and some all the way down to just the seedlings themselves because it looks so cool. But oh my gosh, I've been sitting here for quite a while waiting for those to go up. You can see we're up at level 30 now. I went through about six iron axes, chopping trees, chopped everything down that we had over there. We've got a bunch of chickens in here now. I've been breeding up the animals like crazy, trying to get some more spawns on the chickens and all of that good stuff too. You can see we got a bunch of sheepies in here. We've got a bunch of pigs over there and I'm working on getting the cows rocking back in this way too. Look at all of the little babies. Oh my gosh, you're gonna give me so much leather in the next episode because oh my gosh, it is time for us to get an enchanting setup rocking, which is very, very cool. But my friends, we have done so much work today on all of this stuff in here. And I think that is going to have to be the point where we call it for today's episode. Thank you all so very much for the support on this series so far. You all are insane. We are still flying towards 500,000 subscribers. It's been absolutely absurd these last few days. By the time this video goes out, we might be really, really close to it. We've been getting like over a thousand subs per day, which is crazy. So thank you all so very much for that one. But folks, be please be sure to click that like button down below if you are enjoying this series. Click that subscribe button if you are brand new. My friends and I will catch you on the flip side.